seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I finished all of the mic counts on all the other hives, and here are the results. The worst hive, Queen Helen, you saw on the previous video, had a count of 52 mites doing the sugar roll method, and that is well above what we would consider a threshold for treatment. And the other two hives that overwintered, Elizabeth and Jezebel, both seem to be looking fine. Elizabeth only had two mites and Jezebel had nine. And you can see that this sugar roll method does seem to correlate well with using the sticky boards. Uh, the other three hives that were swarms this year, Karma, Louise, and, and Natalia, uh, Karma only had two mites doing the sugar roll. Louise, I found none. And I didn't actually test Natalia. The hive population is so small I didn't want to bother them too much. They really need to stay strong. While I was in there, I also took measurements of the cell sizes. You can also see on this chart down at the bottom next to the hive names that Elizabeth had a cell size of 5.3, Helen 5.3, Jezebel 5.2, Karma 5.3, and Louise 5.2 millimeters. I didn't measure Natalia either. So why is cell size significant or why am I bothering measuring? Well, there are some people who uh, believe that having smaller cells will help the bees to deal with mites because they don't gestate as long in the cell, so there's less time for mites to build up. Um, if you understand a little bit about mite biology and how mites reproduce, it makes more sense. I'm actually planning on doing a video all about how mites reproduce and the biology of Varroa mites. Uh, I just haven't gotten to it yet because I plan on doing some animation and I've never done animation before. So it might take me a little bit of time to figure that out and put it all together. So with Helen having the worst mite count, uh, well above a threshold for treatment, the question is, what am I gonna do about it? And my answer is nothing. And what I mean by that is I'm not going to do anything different than what I've already been doing for the past three years. Uh, as a treatment-free beekeeper, I don't apply medicinal treatments or chemicals or any kind of treatment to a hive to deal with mites or whatever problems they might be experiencing. That doesn't mean I don't do anything at all. There are things that I do year-round as an integrated pest management solution. I use screened bottom boards to help the mite drop, fall through the hive instead of being able to crawl back up onto the bees. Um, I don't use foundation so that bees can build whatever size cell they want. Plus there are no other contaminations coming in from wax of unknown sources. I don't feed with sugar syrup or artificial pollen patties. Uh, and that can, you know, allowing them to bring in their own food and not stimulating them helps them to stay in cycle with the seasons and it gives them better nutrition. And interfering less in the hive with inspections and uh, other types of messing around helps to keep them in a more natural state so that they can have a stronger immune system and hopefully fight any pests and disease on their own. That's really the goal of treatment-free beekeeping is to try to help the bees do things in their own natural way. Last year I shot a video explaining why I am against using treatments in my hives and there are several reasons. First of all, treating is not a guarantee that the bees will be able to overcome whatever is ailing them and survive. There is not a hundred percent success rate for treatments. Also treating interferes with the natural environment of the hive. There are other things living inside the hive that are beneficial like beneficial microbes and bacteria that the bees need for good health. 
And applying medicines can actually kill off those things and put the bees in a vulnerable state. Many treatments can contaminate the wax, the honey, and the equipment, and I don't want to do that to any of my hives. I'm actually trying to raise local survivor stock, and that means that their bees that come from this area are able to overwinter in this area and fight all the disease and pests on their own without any kind of medicinal treatments. And if I were to treat, then that really is contrary to my efforts in raising survivor stock. Plus, when a weak hive dies, that's really actually helping to clean the gene pool of weak genetics. Part of the effort of raising survivor stock is making sure that the gene pool of the area is strong. So the bees that I catch each year for with swarms, they have to prove themselves to be able to overwinter successfully on their own. If they die, they provide me with drawn comb, sometimes honey that I can use the following season in catching more swarms. If they live, then the following year they'll be split and divided and possibly even do grafting. I haven't tried that yet, but that's something I do want to plan on doing it sometime in the next couple of years. Learn how to graft larvae and raise my own queens. So the hives that overwinter successfully are multiplied, and that is how I develop a survivor stock. But this year, since I am participating in this pilot study to understand more about Varroa mites and how we can help bees overwinter in our, in our area, we are doing treatments on some hives. So what does that mean for me, a treatment-free beekeeper? Well, I do have a plan, and it does not involve using any kind of traditional treatments. I'm actually going to do a placebo treatment, and that is I'm going to play music to one of the hives. There have been many studies that have shown that playing classical music for babies or for plants helps development and helps them to improve their immune systems, help them to grow better. So this is a placebo test that I'm going to be trying on one of my hives. Now I need to pick one of my hives and in order to avoid selection bias I'm going to do that randomly. If I were to just pick my favorite hive or the hive that I think needs the most treatment then that would be a bias in the experiment and it could influence the results. So I'm going to roll a die and I'm going to pick one of the hives based on the die roll. Now I have two groups of hives I'm going to be testing. One is the survivor group. There's three hives in that selection. And the other is the group of swarms this year. And since I don't have a three-sided die, I'll just roll a six-sided die and use the modulo or modulus mathematical function to calculate a die roll of three. If you're not familiar with how modulus works, it's just a division remainder. I've numbered the three hives of the survivor group, numbers 0 through 2, and I'll roll a die to see who gets picked. So that's a 6. So 6 mod 3 is 0, because the remainder of dividing by 3 is 0. So that means Queen Elizabeth will be the hive that gets music played. And Karma, Louise, and Natalia, also numbered 0 through 2, rolled a 3. 3 mod 3 is also a 0. So Karma will get music played to her. I'm not very knowledgeable with classical music, so if you have a selection of classical music that you think I should play for one of my hives, leave a comment below and I will take the one musical selection that gets the most votes, or if there's too many and they don't have any kind of consensus, I'll just pick one. Believe what you think should be the classical music that I should play for one of my hives.